Yes. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this room as you are already here. We need you to lead us and guide us, sanctify us, give us a word from heaven. Lord, in these times, we need a word. For your word, your word says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. So, God, we need a word. We're living in perilous times, God. Diseases, famine. God, we just need your direction. And we need, God, a word that will keep us and don't allow our faith to fail. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, amen. amen. Say it with some power. Say, amen. amen. Say it crispy. Say, amen. amen. Oh, good. Y'all could be seated. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I'm feeling good, y'all. How many of you feel good? Tell somebody I feel good. Don't say it because I say it. Now, don't be lying. And not, well, you know what? You're not lying. You're speaking those things that are not, right? You're speaking those things into existence. Would you do it? And, and, and you're speaking those things into existence, what God is doing in this hour. Amen. Let's go in our Bibles and make sure that I'm in the right book. Everyone that's here for the first time, welcome to the best church on the planet. Only Lashanda, I believe. The rest of y'all, I don't believe. I said, welcome to the best church on the planet. Yeah. Mother Anna, did you speak to the gentleman today when he came and told him what I asked? No. Right. Okay. All righty. Okay, very good. John chapter 9. Y'all, he's a carpenter by trade. Um, we're learning so much about the family. And him and his, his daughter is so faithful in coming here. Um, they are the first ones in service. They speak fluent Spanish. Who comes to an English church with a black bohemian pastor except the Lord lead them here? So clap your hands for them, y'all, for their faithfulness. Oh, y'all got to do better than that. First ones here. Only tell you God that. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So he's a carpenter by trade, I went to say. So if anybody ever need a good carpenter, you need to make sure you hire him. What you do? Hire. What does the word hire mean? Pay. It doesn't, you do not call him and say, Jesus paid it all. Yeah. You're going to call him and you're going to do what? Pay. You're going to pay, say moolah. Yeah. Because you wouldn't want nobody to call you and use your expertise and you not pay them. So we don't want to take advantage of nobody's gifts. Amen? We want to be a blessing to them if they are in the house. But I heard he's an excellent carpenter, even trying to start his own construction company. Can God give him his own construction company, y'all? Yes. Y'all ain't got to clap. I know if you were starting your own, you'd be excited. So we're going to believe God with that, that God will not just bless him with it, but God will make it a multi-billion dollar company. See, some of y'all clapping like you don't believe. I believe all things are possible with God. The Bible says all things are possible to those who what? Believe. To those who believe. John what? Some people, say, some people said it. I must have said it. John chapter 9. Y'all in another service. John chapter 9. John chapter 9. The Bible says in John 9. In what? In John 9, we need to understand that a lot is happening in the world. I, I mean, you, you don't even need to understand that. You could cut on the TV and it will help you understand if you don't understand. I cut on the television the other day, or oh, I was reading on my telephone the news, and it was saying that polio, how did polio get here? And I, I don't know how we switched from monkeypox to polio. So that's how quickly things are happening in, in the earth. And and, and because things are happening so quickly, it could almost make you fearful of the times that we're in. It could make you fearful. But we know that Jesus Christ is Lord of every disease. And every disease is subject to him. Somebody say amen. amen. And no matter, okay, I got to help you. And no matter what run, happens in this world, Miss Carolyn, what happens in the atmosphere, how many of you know you thank God that you can still run to Jesus? He's still a hiding place. Yes, sir. 
That was a good place to shout. God is a hiding place. You know, when we get sick, we run to the hospital. When we have, when there's a crime, we run to the police station. When there's, when we run to different places. But how many of you know we can run to Jesus? We can run right into him. The Bible says the righteous run into him and they are safe. They are what? Are all saved. They are safe, saved. So we know that there's protection in Jesus. What there is? Just keep that in mind, y'all. As the world gets darker, Jesus remains the same. So he provides protection. He's a shelter in the time of storm. When we were in New Smyrna, truth, this is the truth. And they had a horrible hurricane. Hurricane came where we, and the first place we ran for safety was the church. We found a church. We went into Deltona and we all took shelter, not in no shelter. We took shelter in a church. Amen. I believe that the great, I believe that a lot of times when these hurricanes come, I believe that things are happening in the atmosphere. Be, oh yeah, beyond what we see. I believe if God was open our eyes, we would see demons that fight in war and the things that they, they're trying to destroy. But thank God for angels that protect us. Amen. Amen. Thank God for what? Angels that do what? Thanks. Tell somebody, angels protect me. Angels protect us because a lot of us could die on the highway, but there's an angel that protect us. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of us touch somebody who had COVID because we can't see diseases, but there was an angel that protected us from catching it. So there, thank God for angelic hosts in the spiritual realm that protects us from the things that we cannot see. Amen. Amen. John 9, let's read. Now as Jesus, now as Jesus, I love, I thank God for his word. It says in John 9 and 1, now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind. What he saw? Now, I need your eyes for a minute. I don't know if TT's in the room. Anytime God allows you to be in a situation that is strenuous, a situation where somebody's in difficulty, a situation where somebody needs help, God is allowing that situation because you have the remedy for it. Okay, only one person said amen. I want to say it again. Anytime you find yourself around somebody that you have encountered that is not in your normal cir cir circle or, uh, around you, that means God is setting things up because there's something you have, something he wants you to do about it. Yesterday I got a call from Adam, Adam, um, Stephanie's husband, and he called me with the clear blue and he said, I met this Haitian family and they are here. And they are finding a difficult time getting situated. And he said, what could you all do to help them? Because he was trying to find help for them. So that means when people come across your path, God is allowing them to come across your path because you can do something to do what? Okay, three. Uh, we, don't, we like to ask God for ministry. God, if you could use anything, God, use me. And then God will put you in the face of ministry and you don't do nothing about it. It's just that God don't use us the way we want to be used. That's good preaching right there. Or the way we expect to be used. But God will give you things to do. He put people in your life and you'll be praying, God, if you could use me, use me. And then God is putting them there for you to provide or do something for them. Amen. Adam called me because he knew we had what it took to be able to help this family. Amen. And we did. I called Tamala. Tamala is over our projects, project life. And she was able to help the family. Isn't that good, y'all? Yes. Thank God we could help our community, y'all. Put your hands together for that. Y'all ready to ride? Three, y'all. Oh, come on. I hear you, Candace. You waking up, Candace. I say, if y'all ready to ride. It says, and Jesus passed by, and there was a blind man. Why stop for a blind man? Good question. Why stop for a situation that seems hopeless? A situation that seemed like, if he's blind, what could I do about it? Ain't nothing I could do so I could keep it moving. But he stopped. Jesus passed by. That's interesting, y'all. I started preaching. So that means there's no situation that God will allow you to be in, no matter how difficult it is, that you can't help somebody with it. Stop saying it's too difficult. It may be too difficult for you, but it's not too difficult for your God. Okay, that's real, y'all. Let's ride. And, he, and the Bible says, and his disciples ask him. The disciples ask him in verse 2, saying, Rabbi, who sinned? Who did what? Who sinned this man or his parents. We won't know who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind. Now watch Jesus. Now I don't set up the whole scripture to you. Love how you're listening. Stay tuned in. Jesus answered. He said, neither this, the man nor his parents sinned. But watch what I, he says, but that the works of God. So that means the purpose why this young man was in this situation, that God puts us in people's lives and across our path, is because God wants to be glorified through the situation. 
Oh yeah, that means he's setting you up because he wants you to let him be seen. Not you, but he wants to be seen through you. That's why he's put in the situation. He said the parents wasn't born blind. He said this was happened so that God will receive the glory, that the works of God will be glorified. Am I in the book? He said, I must work. This is Jesus talking in verse 4. I must work the work of him who sent me while it is still what? While it is still day. The night is coming when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am what? I am the light of the world. So watch. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground. This is what I believe. Someone said, this is what Dr. Hepburn believes. I believe for every disease on the planet, I believe that there's some type of cure. And I believe one of the greatest cure is things that come natural. I believe when we have natural things, we need to research it. I believe that the thing, I think our parents in the island, y'all, there's something that we used to call bush medicine. Nobody gets scared of that. That ain't witchcraft. That ain't sorcery. We call it bush medicine. And a lot of times they would take things from the bush, from the earth, and they would either drink it or make you bathe in it for issues on your skin. And believe it or not, the bush medicine would bring healing. It will bring healing. The things that they would bathe, bathe on or they boil, they would bring healing to the skin and people would be healed. A lot of our parents, our great uh, uh, grandparents and, and, and parents used to make us take bushmen. There's something that we take called Sora Sea. If you got a cold, you got to drink it. It's the most bitter thing you would ever want to have. And sometimes there's even, even, I don't know if anybody in this room ever had aloe, the straight up aloe. They would tell you even to eat aloe is good for your skin. To put it on your skin is good for the helping your skin shine and look better. And that comes from where? The earth, the earth, the earth. So I believe that the earth, the ground, the soil, the plants hold more remedies for things that we know. So when some of us get sick, we need to look for natural resources. I'm not saying that anything is wrong with medical and medicine, but I believe that the best form of healing is natural herbs, y'all. So we need to pray about studying that and then pray about when you get sick, going to some of the natural uh, 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 ways and, and to understand how I could be healed naturally. Because sometimes when you use medication, you become dependent upon it and then it affects other parts of your body I, I I don't know how many of you ever done this before but they would tell this is for somebody in the room they will tell you that when you take certain medicines there's side effects this may cause nausea this may cause uh, diarrhea this may cause headaches and and, and you'd be like my god I have all these different things that the side effects is it'll make you want to think twice before taking the medicine is that right? So anything that's natural comes from God. We know that it comes from the earth. And, uh, uh, but it, it, it men, how many of you know when we tamper things, we try to put our little extra in it and we end up messing things up? Okay, only five of y'all. So, so natural resources. Sometimes look to natural things before you just immediately go and try to do it naturally. And, and there are people who, who, who are professional in natural things and they will teach you how to do it naturally, who, are, who went to school, who trained and studied different things that you could take for your body. Is that good? Let's go. He said, I must, that was just a little five cents. You could give me, you could tip me later for that. Verse five, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Verse six, when he had said these things, he spat on the ground. What he did? Not in the air. On what? Ground. Look at scriptures. He spit in the ground. He didn't spit in the ocean. So right there, that should make you think something pertains to the ground, something with the earth, something with soil. He spat it in the ground, right? He spat in the ground. He didn't spit, speak in the, he didn't spit in the ocean. He didn't spit in the fish mouth. He spit in the ground. So something with the earth, something with the earth, something with the earth, something with soil, something with plants. That's just more food for your thoughts. You got me? He spat into the ground. I know you never heard that before, but that's why I welcome the Jump Ministries. He spat in the ground and made clay and saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. Food for thought. There may be something in some type of plan that exists that we may be able to help with blindness. Food for what? Just food. Mm, when he said these things, he read that, and he said to him, go wash in the pool. Go do what? Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sin. So he went and he did what? What I got to lose? I mean, walking blind, he telling me to go wash, so what I'm going to do? I have nothing to lose. I'm already blind. This story is going to get more interesting. I have nothing to lose. I'm already blind. Uh, Dion is listening so good like a big boy. So let me go and wash. I like that, Dion. The Bible says, therefore, the neighbors and those who previously had seen him 
that he was blind said, he is not, it, it, is it not this he who has sat and begged? Now, what you need to understand is when true change come in your life, people begin to question the change because they don't understand this can't be the same person this can this is 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 this lucy is this is this tom this this can't be the same person because sometimes people expect for you to stay the same way you are for the rest of your life if i'm poor i'm gonna stay poor if i'm broke i'm gonna stay broke if i'm lonely i'm gonna stay lonely if i'm single i'm gonna stay single if i don't have a car i'm gonna i'm gonna never have a car but how many of you know we serve a god that could turn your life around in a blink of an eye Y'all ain't ready for this. I'll, I'll say it again. We serve a God that is so good that no matter what your situation is, he knows how to take it and turn it around. And the strange thing is, it's so that other people will give glory to God, but when they don't understand it, they begin to question, is it real? Uh, 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 is this the same person? Tell somebody I am the same person. When he was broke as a joke, he was the same person. They didn't have no problem with that. You'll get that later. When you had no car, you was the same person. When you were sick, you, in the, you were the same person. Now that there's a change, they're wondering, are you the same person? Tell somebody, look them in the eye, say, I am the same person. So they said, it's not this he who sat and begged. Some said, some said. Now, all of a, all of a sudden, they confused because a miracle has happened. Why are you confused? When I was, when I was blind, y'all knew exactly who I was. Now that I can see, y'all wondering, is it the same man? So, so that means that there, there was a debate over the testimony. There was a debate over the healing. There was a debate of what had taken place by God. So that means there will be someone in your life that will always question what God has done or is doing in your life and will try to take away the blessing, will try to take away the favor, will try to take away the feel good. Have you ever ever met a party pooper somebody that tries to steal the joy somebody that tries to steal your hope somebody that tries to steal when something good they try to throw a spoke in your wheel but tell somebody I refuse to let anybody take my joy because what has happened to me has been authentic what God has done for me is a real thing has anybody in here have a real testimony about what God or oh, y'all ain't gonna be able to sit on me tonight. Tell somebody what God has done for me. The reason why you better know what God has done for you because there are folks that are seeking to make your testimony not real. There are folks that are trying to take your testimony. But the mere fact you got up this morning, you ought to say, God woke me up this morning and that alone tells me that God is a good God. The mere fact that you're breathing and not, not having COVID or not locked up in prison should make you want to jump on your feet and shout hallelujah because God... Sit down, y'all playing with it. Y'all ain't get that. I had to tell you to stand. Touch somebody real quick. Say, God's been good to me. Mm. They're questioning his testimony. But is he blind? Is he not blind? Is it the same person? That means the devil was after something. When you got to tell your testimony over and over to somebody, be like, look, how many times you want me to repeat it? God's good. Well, how you know? That means they're looking for something to disqualify. <laughs> Let's read, y'all don't believe me. Some said, is this he? Others said, he's like him. He, they look alike. There was a debate. And what he said, y'all got it. He said, I am he. I don't know what's going on in your mind, but I am he. See, you got to know for yourself what God has done for you. You hear, I'm going to say it again. You got to know it for yourself. You got to know for yourself God is good. You got to know for yourself God is a provider. You got to know for yourself God is a protector. You got to know for yourself that I could run to God at any time. Because some people will make you feel you're not worthy enough to go to God. Sometimes we don't fight just against diseases. Sometimes we don't fight just against demons. Sometimes you fight against men's opinion. What men try to put, speak, or, or say over you. Ah, let's preach, black man. Let's go. Some said, is this is he? We read that. Therefore, he said, the Bible says, he said, I am he. What he said? When folks don't doubt you, you let them, I am the one God changed. So if they speak, what you got to do? I wish I had a church. When they speak, what you got to do? I didn't say argue, just tell them I have been changed. Therefore they said to him, 
How were your eyes open? Oh, Lord. Rather than them just rejoice, clap their hands, cut on the music and dance, now they won't question, but that's all right, because you're going to get the testimony of what God has done. Good preaching. He answered and said, Amen. Ah, ha, ha, ha. So uh, that's the first thing you got to understand. You are who you are because of God. You drive what you drive because of God. You got the strength in your body because of God. You got a roof over your head because of God. You got breath in your lungs because of Jesus. Let's go. Thank you, Mother Diana. He answered and said, A man called Jesus made clay. Made what? anointed make no mistake you got to know your testimony you got to know your testimony don't let no one add and don't let no one take away why because the devil is after your story he wants you to feel like you did it on your own or nothing really happened or that you're not seen. How many of you will say in this room, I am seen? Being on church on a Friday night, I don't need nobody to tell me I ain't changed. I know. I wish I had one person in here. The mere fact that I ain't knock you side your head. Because if how many of you know, if some of us were not changed, we'd be in all kind of knock out, drag out fights. I wish I had somebody real in here. Y'all come, y'all, y'all come to play around. I'll tell somebody else. Say, I've, I've changed. The mere fact that we ain't playing that one billion dollar lotto. Change. How many of you know you know what when you born? What's your birthday? The day you 13? 13? Which month it is? 1968? Okay, 68, I'll play. We'll be playing all kind of numbers, but the mere fact that we've been changed and our faith don't come by chance, we know that God is our provider. Oh, tell somebody, I've been changed. Play with it if you want to. The mere fact you ain't got no sugar daddy. Because some of y'all know what you would do to get money. The mere fact you ain't got no sugar daddy and you got your own job, you making your own money, and you depending on God to but touch somebody say, ah, ah, ah. Uh-oh, you're playing with it. I say, touch them, touch them. Say, ah, 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 I've been changed. Say, I know I don't look like it, say, but ah, I've been changed. Oh, they come to play. You're playing with it. Jump on your feet and shout. I have been changed. Sit down. Some of us didn't take no medication. We used to light up. We used to go to the earth, all right. Tell somebody, I've been changed. changed. God has changed you because you know what you used to do. You know what you used to be like. And you got to remind yourself, I may not be everything that I want to be, but I show ain't what I used to be. Because I, you got to remind yourself of that because the devil will play with you and tell you you don't have a testimony. Tell somebody, I've been changed. I would have fight you a long time. Let's know you're better playing with it. I come for somebody tonight that who really has been changed. He answered and said, a man by the name of Jesus made clay. He's taking, telling it in detail. He made clay. I, ain't, I know it for sure because I've been changed. He anointed my eyes. I don't need you to add to it. I'm telling you what happened. And he said to me, he said, go to the pool of Salem. Am I in the book? And wash. And he, he said, no, no long story. So I went. So I, oh, Pastor Elliot, you, you're waking up. So he said, I went and I washed and I received my, no long story, I went, I did what the man said and I received my sight. Anastasia, I went, you all better get this. See, because this word will strengthen you when the devil tries to discourage you. You know why most of us fall sometimes? We don't fall because God has not been good to us. We fall because of discouragement. 
Sometimes when things hit us, that's when the devil tries to find a target to break us down. It's not when we high and God is blessing us. We know God is blessed us. It's when you're discouraged that he come to try to attack you to make you go back to those old things. But I wish I had somebody really near. So you got to remind yourself of how good God is. So when the devil tries to discourage you, you'll be like, uh-uh. He told me to go to the pool and wash. He told me he spit in the ground. He had not in my eye. He said, go and wash. They was after his eyes. I hear your Holy Ghost. They wanted to rob what had taken place. The devil's trying to rob your story. He's trying to rob your single and celibate. He's trying to rob that you're trying to do it right. He's trying to rob that you're in the house of God. He's trying to rob your story. He wants you to get unplanted. He wants you to go and try to look on 1-800-DATE. He wants you not to wait on God. He wants you to make it happen your way. So he discourages you. Can I preach it like I feel it? He uses your age against you. He uses other people's marriage against you. He uses that you this year, this being here so long, you ain't got no car yet. Why this ain't happening to you? But you got to tell the devil, look here. I know I got some things I want yet, but I still ain't where I used to be. I went to the pool. I wash. And I received my sight. I ain't worried with the car, I ain't worried with the wife. I got to concentrate on what God has done for me. He just shifted on you. He didn't say, I ain't got no car. He didn't say, I ain't got no wife. He said, look, I went to the pool and I washed. Uh, 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 because a lot of times, a lot of times when we get car and pool and all these different things we want, we think that's going to make us feel better. But you got to concentrate on where you are. You got to thank God for what you have and where you are. The rest will take care of itself. Stop being discouraged about where you are and start thanking God you're not where you were and where you used to be. You ain't getting high no more. You ain't sleeping with every another person every other night. You ain't going to the club looking for nobody. You ain't getting knocked upside your head no more and calling it love. Or you ain't knocking someone upside the head and say, you can love me. Say, well, whatever works for you. You understand? Let's go. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. I, I don't know where he's gone. And they brought him who formerly was blind to the Pharisee. Am I still in the book? Yes. Are y'all sure? Yes. Now it was a Sabbath. Now it was a Sabbath. Now it was a Sabbath. Listen, the man healed and the story still goes. So it tells you that the enemy was after his testimony. The enemy was trying to disqualify him. He was trying to make him feel discouraged about what happened. That's why you got to know for yourself. Tell somebody, say, you ain't taking my joy for nothing. The devil is after your joy. Say, why, Bishop? Because the joy is your strength. It's when you get sad, you start getting depressed. When you get depressed, you ain't calling reaching for God. You're reaching for something, but it ain't God. And discouragement is subtle. I wish I had somebody in here. You could not get people around you and you could be depressed because you're not getting encouragement. You could be depressed because the bills. You could be depressed because you had family members die and you think you're over it. I mean, there's some things you think you over, you still carry in your body. It still bears on you and you, it comes out in other ways. I wish I had somebody here that understands. The devil was after his story. These people still at work. Let's go. They brought him to the formerly who was blind to the Pharisee. Why are you bringing me to the Pharisee? They won't discredit him. Okay, y'all don't believe me. Now was the Sabbath where Jesus made clay and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also asked him again how he had done what? Are you sure you was blind? Are you sure you used to go to the club? Are you sure it was you? Are you sure you had the right church? Are you sure that church did that for you? Are you sure? Are you sure where you was that prayer did it? It was in your mind because you know we live in a time that they will try, science will try to put places where God did things, science will try to replace it. They'll make you think the vaccine keep you. How many of you know I know somebody greater than the vaccine is keeping me? Oh, y'all ain't got to hear that. 
They'll make you think your dependent is on medicine and then you keep going and you take one vaccine, then two vaccine, then three vaccine, then four vaccine, and then one vaccine fighting against the other vaccine. And you got all kinds of things happening in your body and you wonder what's happening. We need to understand that there's somebody higher than a vaccine that can keep us. Oh, Pastor Ellie, you're the only one that got that. You must understand that. You cannot get to the place. Nothing wrong with science, but you don't want to depend on science above God. God, then science. Who? The order is God, then science. What's the order? God. Matter of fact, doctors don't have the final say. You go to the doctor and they give you a diagnosis. You say, doctor, that's what you say, but that ain't what God said. Mother Diana told me the other day that she went to the doctor and they said to her, you will have to wear your boots indefinitely. Mother Diana said to the doctor, I don't receive that. She said, I hear what you say, but I need my leg. And then when she called me yesterday, she tell me she do go into the gym. What you doing in the gym? Because she's saying to me, I don't care what the doctor said. I'm going to exercise myself out of this. I'm going to do what it takes to get out. I'm not just, I believe God that this boot will not be my t And she don't have to explain to the doctor why she don't receive it. Because it's personal to her. See, you're trying to convince people why you believe what you believe. That's why you got to know your testimony. Let's go. I, I feel like preaching this. And they brought him to formerly the blind to the Pharisees. Now it was a Sabbath. We read that. Then the Pharisees also asked him again how he had received his sight. And he said to them, he put clay. What he did? He put clay on my eyes and I wash and I. He put clay. He just, he telling them the story. What he do it? I ain't got to add. How many of you know when, what really happened to you? You know what happened. You ain't got to add to it. Jesus did it. Who did it? No long story. Therefore, some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God. Who? When people try to disqualify you, they're not just after you. They're after your God. That's what you got to know. The bottom line is not just you. The bottom line is your God. It's trying to discredit your God because if the devil could get you not to believe in God, then he could rob your testimony. He could rob you of further things that God will do in your life, further miracles. So he tries to rob what initially happened. Am I preaching to anybody in this room? You got to know the strategy of the devil. You got to know the plans. You got to know why it's been so hard lately. You got to know why you're being so much tested lately because he's after your testimony because discouragement could take you out of the church hardship could take you out of leadership hardship could make you go from the front row to the back row you forgot where you came from my mama always used to say to me she said I don't care how much God bless you don't ever forget where you came from oh y'all believe I'm joking and she didn't say just don't forget where you came from Miss Carolyn she said don't forget the people that help you Whoever said that's right. That's why every now and again, some folks that helped you, you got to call them and tell them just thank you. You got to remember where you came from because it helps you to understand, I didn't do this by myself. Every now and again, you got to remember to say thank you. You got to know it wasn't my strength. It wasn't my power. It was the grace of God. Because sometimes we forget. We think it's us that did it. How many of you know, uh -uh, God used people to help you get where you are? Okay. Thank you, Mother Nia. Thank you, old, old people who are older. Therefore, some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not... Oh, oh, Lord. What is he after? Testimony. This man ain't from God because if he was from God, he wouldn't heal you on the Sabbath. Look, I don't care if Jesus healed me Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Am I preaching right? I don't care if it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. What matters to me is that I am healed. What people like to do, because you know why people picking on you? Uh, well, if, if, if God was that good, why I ain't getting no car yet? I ain't worried about no car as long as I get to my destination. He was good, that's why he gave me the money to catch the bus. <laughs> he was so good, that's why he gave me strength in my legs so I could walk. Stop letting people try to take one part of your testimony and they forget that you're still alive. I don't have everything that I have, but I have what I need to get. I ain't got no steak in my house, but I got some corned beef. A belly full is a belly full. I can't afford steak right now, and I'll eat one in my refrigerator so I can eat better later. So 
Some of y'all crying, I ain't got no steak. Somebody in this room, I ain't got, I ain't got nothing to eat. My daughter came to me the other night. I'm, I'm telling you all the truth. Adonai came to me. My wife, I fed her because we feed our children. Amen. She did feed her. But at 12 o'clock at night, you know, because we, we were still on a different time. We were still up and our bodies were still up. And she said, Daddy, I hungry. I said, Adonai, you hungry? And, and she, she said, yeah, I hungry. I said, but you ate. And it was late. And I didn't want to put anything on her stomach late. I wish I had somebody in the room. I mean, you might have got it, but I don't want to put anything on her stomach late. So later on, I see in the fridge. I had some cluck. I said, what's going on? And then she comes. She said, I said, what you eating? She said, I'm eating some bread. I said, I don't know. I went on the bread. She said, ain't nothing. I eating dry bread. I said, you not hungry? In other words, and she didn't complain about the bread. She was just eating the bread. A belly full is a belly full until you could do better. I ain't got no mayonnaise. I ain't got no peanut butter and jelly. I listen, old school way women no peanut butter and jelly. You get some bread, you get some tea, you dip it in the tea and you eat bread. Y'all ain't never do that? Oh, y'all Americans ain't know nothing about that. Let me come down here. Let me help y'all. Let me help y'all. Y'all making me come down. Let me tell you what you do. Let me help you. You boil some hot tea. You get it? You roll the bread up. And you dip it in the tea. What you do? And when you dip it in tea, eat it. And it tastes so good. Y'all ain't never had that before? Try it. And if you got some butter, if you got some what? You take the butter and you put it on the bread. Oh, now y'all understand. I, y'all hear that? I say, if you got some butter. <laughs> you do what you could do until you could what? And then later on, see what I didn't tell y'all was, uh, my wife was still up too. And then Adonai said, she's still hungry. So I said, honey! So she got up and she made us some chicken, barbecue chicken, and that was in the fridge. So she, told I, I, she went to bed belly full. You heard I said? She ate the bread first and then the rest of the food came later. You yeah. do what you could do until God provide more. Amen. Somebody say later. later. Say later is coming. Later. But later can't come because he discouraged you just with the bride, dry bread. Right. You couldn't see any further than past the bread because you got bitter where you were at. How many know? you out of the will of God how many of you know somebody else's opinion of you could take you out of the will of God that's why you, you oh Lord that's why you got to know for yourself because not everybody in church can like you oh, oh Lord not everybody in your family like you and they your curse All your aunts don't like you. Everybody, all, the, all your first and second cousins, they don't like you. They don't even like, oh, you didn't know that? They don't even like when you come over. Am I preaching to anybody in here? People will stop you from pressing into the things of God because they're trying to take your testimony. Somebody clap your hand and give God a praise, man. Woo! What I should have done was gotten up and gave Adonai some hot tea. Amen. You'll get that later. So she could have dipped it in the tea with the bread. Amen. Therefore, we read that. Uh -huh. The man of Abba said, therefore, some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. And others said, how can a man who is a sinner do such, th such signs? And there was a division. There was a, listen, listen to why there was a division over somebody else's story. How many of you know we could be petty as humans? Y'all ever met a petty person? Yeah. Y'all ain't say that nothing too loud. Y'all, have you ever in your life met a petty person? Yeah. Petty. And pettiness could steal your joy. Yeah. Their attitude comes after the steal. Your, they were being petty about which day it was a boy that was born blind was healed. Rather than concentrating that he was healed. Oh my God, y'all don't like this story. And to disqualify Jesus is to downplay his healing. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to take, I'm going to take a stab at it. To disqualify Jesus is to downplay what really took place in this boy's life. So the so way I'm going to disqualify the healing is I got to disqualify the healer. <laughs> 
That's why you got to know like you know that Jesus, what Jesus has done. That mama didn't do it. Daddy didn't do it. Bishop didn't do it. That it was God that did it. God might have used mama. God might have used daddy. God might have used bishop. But the ultimate person that did it was God. The doctor didn't do it. God did it. God gave the doctor the wisdom to cut the cancer out. God gave the doctor the wisdom to see the cancer. It was not, how many of you know a lot of doctors cut and, they, and you never get off the table? Because they cut wrong or they cut the wrong place. So you got to understand it was more than the doctor that was at work. Oh, that's, oh, oh, oh. that's why when they name then why do some people who take the vaccine die? You got to know it's more than the vaccine. There's a God that has to keep you beyond the vaccine. Y'all don't believe me. There's a young man right now that called me, a true story, called me on yesterday that took the vaccine. And from he took the vaccine, he's been in and out the hospital. I'm not telling you what I guess. I'm telling you what I know. Who took it? I'm not saying to anybody in his room, you not leave here and say, I say, don't take no vaccine. You got, if you feel the Lord's leading you to take it, you take what the Lord tells you. You hear me on camera? Do what the Lord leads you to do. Do not say jump, say don't take it. Because if God tell me to go take it, I run it. I can beat you to the hospital. <laughs> Say amen. Yeah. For me, he took it. He had heart problems, could not play basketball anymore. And they called me just yesterday. They said, so he sent me the picture with him taking the ambulance. Matter, matter of fact, I got it in my phone. The ambulance came for me, took him to the hospital. And he's been having problems ever since. It triggered something in his heart. I said to him, I said, you better start praying. And I didn't say it because of the vaccine. I say, something's going on in your body. And you need somebody greater than you to call on. I say, God is get, trying to get your attention. He's using this to get your attention. He's, I said, you need to have somebody to pray with you. And he said to me, he said, I have people who are praying for me. And I pray, I'm praying for him too. Somebody say, amen. amen. Let's go. The Bible says, therefore, some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, read because he does not keep the Sabbath. Others said, how can a man who is, oh, we read all that. 17, then they said to the blind man again, what do you say? This, Lord, we gone from verse, where we at? We gone from verse 6. We all up in verse 17 now. And they still debating. Let me tell you what that means. That means for the rest of your life, the devil going to be after your testimony. It ain't going to stop after tonight. Next week sometime, you can try it. Next month sometime. Next year sometime. That's why you got to remember where you. Because he will forever be after your story. He don't stop. He's a relentless enemy. I just taught you 101. He will forever be after your story. That's why you got to know your story. <laughs> you got to, you, I'll say it again. He will forever be after your story that's why you gotta know your story you gotta know it for yourself so good you gotta know it for yourself I ain't going back to the world because God has been good to me somebody say amen and because God has been so good to me there's nothing for me to go back to so when you remember who's been good you can try to stay with the one that's been good when people go back, they forget. That's so good. When people go back, they leave church, start going back to club, they backslide. It was not because God was not good. They forgot. The problem with some of us, nobody in this church, for some reason, we think the grass, I don't know who this is for, is greener on the other side. And we, we say, God, we look at the other side, and the devil made the other side look like, boy, you better come over here. If you're looking in the natural, where you are is better than the other side. My mother would put it this way. She said, you know what you got, but you don't know what you're getting. We're living in a time what people do is they leave one relationship, Mother Diana, not this church though, and they think that, you know, this relationship ain't working, so I'm going to go to another relationship. You better rethink that. Let me tell you why you better rethink that. You know what you're working with now, but you don't know what you have to work with. If you don't fight through the relationship you're in and trust God and believe God for the relationship that you're in, that God, that God has placed you in, that who has placed you in? What makes you think if you leave that, that something else is going to be better? 
It, it's the grass looking greener on the other side. You leave a man that didn't hug you, didn't love you, didn't be cuddly to you, and then you met somebody who later on beat you. You let God work things out, imperfections that he find in people. Stop thinking it's better on the other side. Did I help anybody? Your whole church goes quiet. So I say, God knows what's good for me. Yeah, let's go. 17, but they said to the blind man again, what do you say about him? Because he opened your eyes. He said, he is a what? He look here. This is what, <laughs> this is what I say about him. He's a prophet. So I say, this is what I say about him. He's good. He's amazing. Say, he's wonderful. So when somebody say what you say about him, you better say something again because they're trying to discredit him. You got to know what you say about your Jesus. <laughs> so they say, man, he's a father to the fatherless. He's a mother to the motherless. He's a friend greater than any friend in this world. He is a provider. He's a healer. He's a doctor. He's a lawyer. He's bread when I'm hungry. He's water when I'm thirsty. He's an everlasting father. He's a komoshaha. He's a comforter. Heba. He's a protector. He's a tarabaka. He's a He's a mind regulator. He's my strength. He's my shield. He's my buckler. He's a hedge all above me. He's a fighter. He's full of strength. He's full of power. He's a lover. You got to know who your God is. You got to know who your God is. Because life is going to throw you things that if you're not sure who your God is, you're going to run back to it. You got to be sure. And even if you run back to it, you don't stay in it because it will never satisfy you like the God you know. Somebody say, God has been good to me. Has he been good to anybody in this room? Let's ride, let's ride. Some people think, why do you go to church on Friday? Why y'all is clap? Why y'all is pay tithes? Why y'all is pray in tongues? Why y'all is wake up 5.30 in the morning? Why y'all is fast the way y'all is fast? Because God has been good to us. And the least we could do is give back to God what God has given us. The least we could do is turn down our plate. The least we could do is raise our, raise our hands and, and lift our hands and praises to him. We used to be in the, in the nightclub, party over here, party over there. Isn't that something? We would be in the nightclub jumping and raising hands. Then we get in church and they say, why are y'all so loud? Why are y'all so loud? All in the nightclub raising our hands, building up a sweat. And then when we come to church, you won't question my prayer. I'm praising him because God did it for me. He's still doing it for me. I'm shouting hallelujah. I know you don't like it. Oh man, I feel like preaching. They question your praise. Tell somebody, don't question my praise. You'll be all in the nightclub. All people all sweating on all sides of you. People even stepping on your feet and all in hell and bucking you in the head. And you still dancing. We come to church and get mad when people praise God. You better tell somebody, get out of my way. God has been good to me. God is the one that strengthened me. God is the one that keeps me. God puts food. You don't know how far I have come. Get out of my way. You don't know somebody else's story. You better let me praise. But I too loud. You better sit someplace else. <laughs> Somebody say amen. The problem is y'all got to get louder. You remember blind by the mail? He say Jesus. He's Jesus. They say shut up. Jesus. He say shut up. He say Jesus. He got louder. They say, shut up. Shut up. Tell Jesus. Shut up, blind madam here. You don't tell me shut up. All y'all could see. All y'all could see. All y'all got eyes. Y'all could see. I'm blind. I got to get his attention. I, and, he could, and especially if I know he could heal me. Jesus. Somebody shout, Jesus. Jesus. That's it. You got to shout it. You don't let no one tell you why you shouting, why you look like that. They getting mad. They didn't ask you that in the club. They didn't ask you that at a basketball game. They didn't ask you that at the football game. If you could get louder for people on a court, you don't know. A baseball, you don't know. Why you can't get loud for the one that woke you up this morning? 
sit down. Let's go. I, I, I just don't do that. <laughs> it may be time for you to do something else. Am I right? He marched around the wall and he said, shout on the seventh day. What he said? Yeah. There comes a time you got to shout. If a dog come chasing after you, you'll be like, cat. If a bulldog come after you, will be like, cat. If a dog chase you, will be like, cat, 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 cat. Somebody you got to tell that devil, no, in the name of Jesus. Go, in the name of Jesus. You got to take authority in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in 7, then they said to the blind man again, what do you say about him? They say he would be read the prophet. 18, but the Jews did not believe. What did it say? Are y'all reading the same Bible I read? Are we, uh, Jacob, I ask you all a question. Are we reading the same Bible? But the Jews did not believe concerning him. You know what that tells you? Some people don't want to believe your change is authentic. No matter how you try to convince them, no matter what you try to tell them, they just don't want to believe. They choose to stay where they are. Because there's, let me tell you why. Because there's nothing in it for them. If they had some special interest in it, then their attitude might have changed. But because it was not focused on them and it was focused on Jesus, they begin to hate not everybody celebrates when you get a new car. Good preaching. Not everybody celebrates when you come in in a new outfit and they look at your shoe. Have you ever seen someone check you out from head to toe? Everybody don't celebrate your greatness. Oh, everybody don't celebrate that you're praising God. Everybody don't celebrate that you're in church. Everybody's not celebrating that you're blessing God. Everybody is not going to celebrate what God is doing for you. Matter of fact, they don't like your new hairdo. That's why they never complimented you. Because it ain't them. They don't have no interest in it. Everybody don't your new dress they don't celebrate your new suit they don't celebrate your new haircut because it ain't them that's why you got to know for yourself I look good uh, can I say it again you got to know for yourself how you look and stop waiting on people to tell you how wonderful you are stop waiting on people to compliment you you got to look at him and say what's up bro you look good today you got to learn to encourage yourself. And it's not pride whoever I'm preaching to, Joey, the next time. It's not pride. Next time people come in closer, door. It's not pride. It's not you trying to, to, to big up yourself as you understand. Before you was not even wanting to look in the mirror. Before you didn't know how to encourage yourself. Now that you're looking good, learn to tell yourself, I look good. Learn to feel good about yourself. Learn to feel good about where you are. Stop waiting on people to celebrate you who never will. They never said to him. They did not believe. Some people will never celebrate your change. Preach, black man. They'll never celebrate your birthday. They'll never celebrate that you're still here. They're trying to find something wrong. Who I'm preaching to? Do you know the devil has some people on assignment just to find something wrong? Uh, this, this house looked too put together. Something wrong in here. <laughs> and I can find it. <laughs> You're laughing, but there are people who are on assignment to find what's wrong. Never what's right. They won't find what's wrong. Am I talking right? And you need to know that. And that is a sign to discourage you. They got rice. You ever met somebody? They got rice on the, the plate. They got chicken on the plate. They be like, any vegetable? In the name of Jesus, how you getting mad about vegetables you didn't cook? Um, I see y'all got brown rice. Is there any white rice? If you don't get out this kitchen. You ever serve somebody, I like dark meat. You better thank God you got meat. Any dress, any white meat, any, uh, I don't eat the wing. You ain't hungry. Oh, 
hungry people will be glad for something to eat. Am I preaching right to anybody in this room? What some of yeah, yeah, yeah. What some of us do is we look for reasons to complain. You're trying to please people who will never be pleased with nothing. They're trying to find out what's wrong on the plate. I'm preaching to somebody in here. They're not thankful for the plate, Takeda. They're trying to find out what's, well, what's wrong with this plate. They ain't, not, they ain't never been to no church that served them Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. But they still come and trying to say, what's wrong? And they ain't never cook a day in their life. You in the name of all that's holy. How you gonna find out what's wrong and you never contribute it? Am I preaching right? Stop letting people try to rob your joy. And then when they come, you get mad. They come and tell them, you know, <laughs> oh, here comes complaining Betty. <laughs> here comes Attitude Frank. They always in line. Let me say this. And God will put them in line just to see how you handle it. Yeah. Let me tell you why you get mad. You get mad because you forget your testimony. You get discouraged because you forget your testimony. You don't want to serve no more in the kitchen. You don't want to serve no food more because you let somebody discourage why you were in the kitchen in the first place. And when God was testing you, you got to remember where you came from. You ain't had no food. You got to learn to be grateful. You got to say, I thank you that I'm not in the crack house no more. I could serve in your house. I thank you that I ain't on drugs no more. I could serve in your house. Stop letting people steal your joy over their pettiness. I don't want to sit here. Sit me, sit me close. I don't like where I'm sitting. Usher. <laughs> sit me in the back. Sit me in the front. Sit me in the side. I want to sit right here. I don't like where you're sitting me. I don't like where you're sitting me. I don't like where you're sitting me. <laughs> and then Usher, you get thrown off because the person had an attitude. You got to understand. I thank God that I could serve in his house. I could serve. I could what? About all, I can serve, not be served. Because when you stand at the door, when you preach, when you call, you're called to serve. Abaku say, Mama, Dayo. How many times you went in the restaurant and the server, you didn't like what they brought us? They could I bring some more water? The servant said, I don't like the water. I don't like the way you don't like the water. This glass is a little dirty. But the servant said, well, I'm sorry, I gotta go get another glass. I don't like the way the meat tastes. So the servant said, Well, I gotta go get some other meat. And most times, sometimes we even eat the food and still send it back. And what the server does is, the server is there to serve you, to make sure you are accommodated. You should not be getting no attitude with anybody because they got an attitude with you. When you do that, you forget you are called to serve. You got to remember your testimony. You got to remember where you came from, lady. I'm standing at this door because I wouldn't be, I would be standing someplace else. I, I thank God for the opportunity to serve in the house. And when I remember that you do it with joy and nobody can take it from you. Because you know why you do it. Oh, that's so good. See, when nobody could take it from you, I know what I used to be. I know what I used to be. I know where I used to go. I know where I would have been. And because God has been so gracious to me, it's good for me to serve. So your little attitude can't change how I feel because I overcame things greater than you. <laughs> how can I serve you? Every time you serve, you know how many people I've served over the years and they didn't church from you. You believe I'm joking? I'm serving. Right now I'm serving. And people, everybody in the congregation will be like, go preacher. Some people in the congregation. Some people in the congregation are like, This is while I'm preaching. This is why, and I have never stopped serving. I've been serving for over 35 years because I've learned why I'm serving. I can't let people's facial value stop me from serving because somebody in the restaurant will enjoy the food. Amen. There's this athlete, y'all don't believe me. There's this athlete and his name is Trayvon Bromel. Y'all tell him, come. I'm trying to get him to come to jump. Trayvon Bromel, he became, he was a third place runner in the world games third place very fast athlete very fast very, like, fast and he came first a few times a few, a few times he came first but you know, i was watching him run the other day 
Monica. And I had somebody who know him to call him, world-class athlete. I said, call him and tell him I have a word for him. So Trayvon, if you're watching, here's the word. Every time he speaks, he spoke about, he speaks when he says, he said, and he cried because he came 31 as medal. He was excited. He said, people say I wouldn't have made it. And he said, here I am today. I've made it through all the things. And then my eyes went like, bing, 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 bing. I said, he's not running for the victory. He's a born again Christian because he understands the revelation of who Christ is. And I see he's running because he's trying to prove his haters wrong. You can't be in church because you're trying to prove it to mom, you're trying to prove it to dad, you're trying to prove it to friends, you're trying to make it. You truly won't be in church because you want God. You won't be in church because you won't find a husband or you won't find a wife. You won't, you won't be in church because of wrong reasons, because those reasons won't keep you in the long run. You got to be in church because you want God. You can't be in church because you want money. <laughs> you can't be in church because you want somebody to pay your light bill or pay your water bill. Because when somebody, the minute we don't pay it no more, you're going to get offended because we didn't do what you wanted us to do. You can't be in church because everybody say, I love you. Because somebody one day don't like you. You got to be in church because you want God, you got to know why you are here. If you run for wrong reasons, you're going to press for the wrong reasons. And that pressing is not going to come from a place of freedom. It's going to come from a place of trying to prove people wrong. Hallelujah. If you run free, you will win. Bye-bye. That's the word for him. If you run free, you will win. You're running and you're not free. You're running and you're carrying people. So he's running a hundred like this. Oh, y'all tell him one day because I may never meet him. He's running like this. He's running like this. He's all the people over there. The they told me I couldn't make it. At seven, they told me I couldn't make it. My mama was in there. My daddy was in there. So he's running with all kind of loads. He's not running free. The minute he gets free, he wins the hundred meter dash. Ah! A lot of us in church, we run in, but we ain't running free. We run in with all the disappointments. We run in with all the letdowns. We run in with how they left me and what they did for me and how they used me at the last church. When the last church was to make you stronger and better, you can't run with how people have hurt you and did you wrong. That's why some of you are still single, because you run in single, but you're still married to the last relationship. You run in, but you're still bound to help somebody hurt you. You're not running free, Abba. You got to run free to be free, Abba. To win, to win, to win, to get to the other side. You're still in poverty because you're not running free. You're still crying over what you lost and who took money from you and how you gave it to them and they never gave it you back. And you're running. And you can't come into the place of wealth because you're still bound with what they did in the past. Somebody say, run free. Run free. Say, run free. run free. Then you will become a winner. You can't run with what mama did. You can't run with what daddy did. You got to run free, healed of what mama did. Healed of what daddy did. I'm preaching right. Come on, Shadrach. Heal the what father did, what pastor did, what leaders did. You got to run free of that. Until you learn to run free, you will never reach your destination. Hallelujah. Tell somebody say, let it go. Let it go. Ah, tell somebody say, let it go. Let, it go. let me tell you why. Whoever I'm preaching to, you better let it go because he's after your testimony. He wants your story. This whole chapter was a boy being blind and they're trying to disqualify what had really taken place. The whole chapter was about a boy, preach pastor, preach bishop, preach, 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 preach bishop at Burn, preach doctor at Burn. The whole story is about a boy that was healed and they're trying to disqualify him. The devil gonna spend most of his life trying to disqualify the good things in your life. And then the problem is you've let him. The problem is you have let him. The only thing the boy said, I was blind. The man spit in the ground, took some water, made clay, put it on my eye, and he said, go wash. He stuck with his story. We make it difficult, it ain't difficult. Stick with your story. Stick with 
your story. Make your story personal. This is mine and nobody could take it from me. This is my testimony and nobody can take it from me. This is what God has done for me and nobody can take it from me. Somebody say hallelujah. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he might have been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him who had received his sight. They asked them, saying, Is this your son who you say? How many of you know they still didn't believe? Who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? People don't believe you can change. I hear you, Lord. Some people don't expect for you to change. I won't give you a word about expectation. When you pray for something, you should expect it. Don't just say amen to that. I want you to hear that. If somebody tell you you're coming over for a day, coming over for a, you're going on on a date next week, you should have expectation for that date. Let me tell you what that means. That means you begin to think what you can put on. You begin to think where you're going to go for dinner. You begin to get your hair done. You begin to get prepared because you expect a date. A lot of us pray and ask God for things, but we don't expect. How are you going to expect to have a car and don't have a license? How you expect to be married and don't even know where you want to be married? Where you want your honeymoon? They sound like simple stuff. Play up. Anything you pray to God for, there should be a level of expectation. For now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not yet seen. You're praying, but there's no expectation. When last have you been furniture shopping? When last have you went looking for a car you want to drive or a truck? When last have you went in a neighborhood that you want to live? When last have you went in the mall and look at a dress? You pray for things, but you don't expect. Mm -hmm. Because if you expect, you move with, you don't just come, Lord, I pray God, you give me a car. I pray God, you give me a house. I pray God, you give me healing. I expect for God, pray that God will heal you and don't get up out of bed. You don't expect to be healed if you stay in bed. Even if you move a toe, you move. Even if you move a leg, expectation is movement. I've left the church. You, everything you pray for, you should expect. You should act like it. When, what kind of dress you going to wear when you get married? What type of food you want at your wedding? How many people that will be at your wedding? Do you want a wedding on the beach? Do you know your destination for your honeymoon? Or just, Lord, I want to get married. I want to get married. Are you preparing for marriage? Why do you want to get married? Is marriage for you or is it for ministry? Will you and them serve in the house of God together? Will you all do ministry together? But you cry, I'm single. You cry, God, send me a husband. God, send me a wife. God, do this. But there's no expectation. Expectation is planning and preparation. I expect to be blessed. Let me give you more proof. Before any builder builds a property or builds a building, they put the design and the project on the land. The building is not there yet. They expect for the building to be completed. And they have the design of how the building will look. I need somebody. Right, let's ride. No building on the land. How many vacant properties have you passed? And they, had, and they have on that property soon coming. They expect that the building will be built. Where's your drawing? Where's your vision? What have you written down? Do you have room in your closet for your new clothes? Do you have a next pillow in your bed for your husband that's to come? A little lower. You expect him to come. Where's his pillow? Do you lay a dish at the table for him? I expect he's going to show up. When you leave your house, how do you leave your house? You put on just curlers in your hair and things on your head and just go to the store just like that. Because if you expect, you will never leave your house any kind of way. Because you can meet him anywhere or her. Expectation is preparation. Bebosa. That's right. Asan, eat it up. Expectation is preparation. 
God will give you the chairs before he fill it. God will give you the vision before it comes to pass. The vision first, then it will bring it to pass. You expect to have a baby, so you, there is things in preparation for a baby. You expect to have a baby, so you prepare. That applies in every area I left you all. In every area of your life. Lord, send me more money. Lord, help me to be wealthy. Lord, I won't bless the church. You won't bless what? Y'all think God don't look at heaven sometimes and just say, oh, jump, oh, church, oh, people, oh, my people. Expectation, Miss Carolyn, is not just crying and praying. Expectation is preparation. Preparation is being prepared physically. When last have you been to the gym? You want to be married? You can't walk from the car lot to church without breathing hard. How you can carry a husband? You don't leave. You can't walk. How you can carry a wife if you're tired all the time? You can't get out of bed. Your body is tired. How you can carry a wife? How you can carry your children if you're tired? You have to go to a gym and get physically prepared for what is coming. See, I'm making you think. I'm praying for things, but if I was expecting, I would prepare. People said, Jonathan expected to go to the NBA, and he trained, and then he's in the NBA. He didn't just show up. He prepared for it. They went to different schools, drove from Miami for hours, and read the book, went from place to place, preparing, and then he's there. There was preparation, expectation, and his expectation brought NBA. Everything you want in life comes from expectation and preparation, not just prayer. Say, prove it. Anastasia, seeing that you head to the side, let's go. We're about to go. If you hear a hurricane coming, they will warn you on the, on the radio. Hurricane's not here yet. And then they will tell you a hurricane is coming, and then you prepare for the hurricane. You tape up your windows. You get the boards. You go to the flashlights. You buy water because you're preparing for what's coming. You're expecting it to come. There's no hurricane that came. But you prepare. You were prepared if it came. There's expectation with no preparation. That's what faith is. There are people all over this earth praying to God for things that there's no preparation. They see trouble as devil when trouble is preparation. You know the storm will bring you closer to God. The storms are not to drive you from God. The storm is designed to bring you to God. You know family problems is not designed to push you from family. Some family problems are designed to push you to your real family which is God. Who is God? It's just how you look at the storm. It's how you look at what comes in your life. The devil was after this young man's testimony. But all through the scripture we're about to go, he never lost it. He held on. I was blind. He spit in the ground. Made some clay. Put on my eye and say, go wash. The only people that had a problem in this story was the Pharisees. And the people who did not believe. But the young man and Jesus, they were straight. Say why? Because Jesus knew who he was and the young man had a story. Jesus knew who he was. You can't change it no matter what you try to do. He will be the same today as he was yesterday. He'll forever be God. We can't change God. But you... Got to know your testimony. What keeps you is knowing where you came from. What keeps you in God is remembering how God has kept me all my life. How he's provided. That's what keeps you. Not good music, dancing and, and jumping and shouting. That's not what's going to keep you. What's going to keep you is you. I'm old. Say prove it. Five of y'all. Say prove it black man. Oh, that's five of y'all. Say prove it black man. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb, Joey. The next one was, and your testimony. He after your story. All your life, he was after your story. I'm, I'm telling you something else. When you leave here, he's still going to be after your story. That's why your story has to be real to you. 
because he's going to do everything he could to mess up what? Your story. You got to know it. I was blind. There was a time in my life I had no food on my table. I had no clothes to wear. Nobody was around me. Nobody supported me. I was insecure. I was fearful. And I came to know the Lord and he developed my strength. I got stronger. I began to feel beautiful. I got rap albums. I started writing books. I started getting married and having babies and singing where I would never sing. And that's my story. I can't let no one take that story from me because I know where I was. I used to be on crack cocaine, and now I'm a mother of the church. I used to be a divorced mother, now I'm a pastor, and God raised me up. I can't let no one take my story. I know where I was. I was abused by a man, and then God, and I felt that I would never make it if he left me, if he struggled, but now I'm, I'm surviving, and God has provided for me. Now I got my own business, and a business came out of it, and I'm maturing because I know where I was. You got to remember your story. Because when I remember my story, Jerome, my walk will change. I won't come in here like somebody's doing me a favor, Joey. I'll come in here because I understand that every time I come, it's to give God glory. I won't come in here and wonder if this is where I should be, if I want to be. Uh, like, like, I don't know where I want to be one day. I'll come in here sure of where I want to be. Because I know the ship that God used to help me get to my destination. Oh, Pastor Elliot. Remember what I said my mama taught me? Never forget where you came from. Uh, oh, you all missed that. And the people who help you. Quinn, what happened over the years is people forgot where they came from. And they forgot who helped them. Oh, y'all don't believe me. I'm trying to get. They forgot where they came from. And they forgot who helped them. Do you know why? Because Pharisees came. And they tried to disqualify Sky. I've been doing this a long time. You know why I preach so well? I preach so well because I haven't forgotten my testimony. I haven't forgotten that. See, I used to use it on side toilet. I try not to come down there. I'm from the Bahamas. I used to use the outside toilet. I grew up in a single parent home. Four brothers, Ox Joey, Ross Connor, single parent home. My mother raised us. I was skinny boy. Didn't have nothing. I was telling Odise today, Odise stand up, it's the truth, the way till I say it. Do y'all know I used to have to go to Amscott across the street? Oh Lord, help me. I used to go to Amscott across the street. To have to keep the lights on and pay the bills in this house. Have I like take care of other people's bills? Did I say that to you today, Odise? Come. While I pay other people's bills, and because I always had a ministry house. If I'm telling the truth, stand. I had a ministry house from I was in New Smyrna that didn't just start here. People were always living with me and other houses. I sit down, sir. And other houses, sit down. This, I'm talking about the people from New Smyrna. Y'all understand the story. So I was always paying. So I used to go to Amscott to keep the bills on, not just this house, other people's house, because there were people in other houses. I haven't forgotten. I just told him that today. Did we talk about that? I said, well, did you remember when I had the raw Peter to pay Paul and have to go to Amscott? And when you go to Amscott, you know it's a two-week check. You got to go to Amscott and pay the money and get the money, but you got to pay it. You got to pay it back. I shared that testimony with him today. Guess what? He was to say what? I ain't got to go to Amscott no more. Yeah. I like you, lady. Y'all ain't clapping. You know why you ain't clapping? Because it ain't your testimony. You will never feel that like me. You know why you never feel it like me? Because you never went through what I went through. You were not blind like me. You got to know your testimony. See, because when it's your testimony, whether somebody claps or not, it don't matter. Because it don't have to be real to them. It has to be real to me. Because it's my testimony. Anybody feel me in this room? Oh, you got 
gotta know, you gotta know, you gotta know. You gotta know, you gotta know, you gotta know. Every eye closed in the room. How good God has been to you. You gotta know, you gotta know. How far God has brought you. Uh, every eye closed, you gotta know, you gotta know. How God has provided for you, not just when you did everything right. If you tell the true story, he was even good when you were doing things wrong. You got to know like you know, like you know. I was born blind. I went, he spit in the ground. If you hear me tonight, stand on your feet. Keep your eye closed. And then I went to the pool and washed. I, I found Jump Ministries and I washed. And then I received my sight. I received my sight. I received my sight. I, I received my sight. I did. You got to know your story. Yes, Jump Ministries. You got to know why you hold on, why you press on Friday, why you press on Tuesday, why this morning you all eyes closed. I, I, the Lord woke me up about five o'clock. And, and when he woke me up, I was tired because I just came off a trip. I promise you, I'm telling you the truth. I was tired and I, I rolled out of the bed tired because I went to bed about two o'clock. So you calculate two to five, you, you add it up. So I, I was tired, but I, I put on my sweat and then I put on my jacket and then I went to the, to, the, to the bathroom and, you know, just clean up just a little bit, just a little bit because it was early in the morning. So it really didn't matter that much. Yeah. And as I dressed, I, I staggered, I staggered, I staggered, Pastor Cocroft. I staggered to the elevator, almost like with my eyes closed, just, just going, Monica, just staggered to the, to the elevator. And when I got in the elevator, my eyes were still closed. I was staggering to come to prayer at five, at five. And when I staggered, the lady, the elevator opened, I didn't expect it. They said, good morning. I woke up, I said, oh, Lord, you scared the Jesus out of me. And I staggered to the altar, me and the Lord, we had a, we had a talk I do it for two to three hours this morning. And I was telling him, I said, God, you've been good to me. And so all I had to do was just make it to the altar. All I had to do was press my way, Quinn. Yeah, all I had to do was come. And Bishop, why do you press? Because God has been good to me. So it was nothing for me to stagger. It was nothing for me to stagger to come. Oh, eyes closed. You dress like you expect. You shop like you expect. You move like you expect. You make room like you expect. You walk, you live like you expect, children of God. That's why he said, look up your redemption, draw it nigh when you see these things come and expect for me to come. Eyes closed, we, we got to not lose our expectation. Remember your testimony. Bishop, how I going to stay in church? Remember your testimony. Bishop, how I going to backslide? Remember where you came from? Because how many of you know, if you remember where you came from, you surely ain't going to go back there. Because it wasn't all that. Because if it was all that, we would still be there. <laughs> we left it because we would have been dead if we stayed in it. I wish I had somebody real in here. We, I, I, we left it because we would have been dead if we stayed in it. But he rescued me. He rescued me. If God rescued anybody in this room beside me, take a step forward. Testimony, eyes closed. Your eyes still supposed to be closed while you're peeking. I'll tell you why some people can't cry and rejoice like you. Because their testimony isn't yours. You have to know where you came from. You got to remember those sleepless nights. You got to no, remember no food in the cupboard and, oh man. You got to remember no running water, no hot water. 
Yeah, you got to remember your testimony. Yeah, you never understand. See, when people cry and they shout, it's because of their testimony. When mama was in there and daddy was in there, you got to remember your testimony. When I was sick in the hospital and nobody visited me, Miss Carolyn, no, not anybody came to my bed and checked on me and made sure I was all right. But the Lord saw me through. When I laid in my bed sick and no one was there to bring me tea or medicine. Remember where you came from. You have no problem leaving church because you can remember where you came from. And when the Pharisees come, you'll be like, no, no, no. Oh, no, I was blind. He spit in the clay. He put it on my eye. He say, go wash. And that's what I did. And now I see. And now I'm driving. And now I'm living. Now I'm dressing. Now I smell good. Now I'm pregnant. Now I'm taking trips. Now I can travel. Now I got a passport. Now I got a house with hot water, cold water. I could cover myself with my own blanket. I could eat steak. I could eat lobster. I could buy you what you want. Remember where you came from. Ah, yeah. That should be everybody in this room because you remember how far you have come from pillar to post, from house to house, having to sleep on the floor and roaches crawling over you. I remember rats could not sleep because of fear of rodents. Raise your hands to heaven in the room. Remember your testimony. He's after it. He wants you to disqualify you. You didn't do nothing. You, you didn't do nothing. Yes, I did. I was blind. He cut some clay and he spit in the ground, made clay, put on my eyes, say, go wash. And now I see you can't take it. You can't take it. Somebody close your eye, put your hands in the air. Say, you can't take it. You can't take it. Tell somebody, say, you can't take it. Put your hands in the air. Tell the atmosphere two years from now, three years from now, four years from now, five years, ten years, twenty years. Should the Lord tarry, tell the devil, you can't take it. Tell it, tell him, you can't. Take it, tell the devil. You can't take it, tell him. You can't take it, tell him. You. You're saying it too weak for me. I say, tell the devil. You can't take it. Tell him off. Say, you can't. You might as well stop trying because I'll testify about the goodness of Jesus for the rest of my life. I'll testify about how good God has been for the rest of my life. You can't take it. It's mine, it's mine, my, my testimony. This is how I overcome. This is how I overcome. Yes, Monica, this is how I overcome. I may not be where I want to be, but I where I used to be. This is how I overcome. Father, in the name of Jesus, in case we forgot, my prayer is that you remind us that we can see now. You brought us a long, 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 long way. You brought us a long, long, long way. I 
hand raised in the air and raise eyes closed this is you right I'm not talking to everybody in this room because I'm talking to those who know Bishop you it was me it was me I was that blind boy and, and things have been trying to rob me lately it's me it's me but I hear you tonight that my testimony is how I overcome that's why when you see me press the way I press and, it's because I remember how far I've come. Hallelujah. Jesus, we order you. And now my prayer is, Jesus, that no one in this room will leave the same way that they came. That's my prayer. Discouragement, I command you to go. In the name of Jesus. Uh, despair and fear, despondency, I command you to go. Pharisees, I silence you. In the name of Jesus, I silence your attempt to steal the power, the anointing, the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he is the king of kings. Somebody's stomach is hurting them. I come against that stomachache now in the name of Jesus. Somebody, that stomachache goes now. Cancer cannot live in your body. Cancer cannot live in your body. Ulcers can't live in your body. I command it to go now in the name of Jesus. I speak to your stomach. I speak to your spirit in the name of Jesus. I reverse every curse. I declare by the stripes of Jesus you are healed in the name of Jesus receive it receive it receive it the one who had the stomachache receive it put your hands on your stomach whoever you are I don't know what he's trying in your lyrics today but in the name of Yeshua go 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 Elondo, you lift your hands in the room. It's worship that makes the presence of God real. Father, tonight, we search all over. We found that there's nobody like you. I wish I had somebody in the room. Nobody could love us like you. Huh? I could leave you all in a minute. I could leave you all in a minute. I just, I got to keep myself. You see, I could go in. I could really leave you all because when I be, I could become like the keto, but I, I got to sustain myself because uh, when I think about the goodness of the Lord, when no father was there, Joey, when no mother was there, I, my brothers them came later I came here at 19 by myself take that one home you Americans with family here I came from the Bahamas with no one here to new in New Smyrna Beach New Smyrna Beach was segregated from one end to the other they used to hang blacks in a place called Samsula Y'all don't believe me by myself at 19. <laughs> ah, when I remember how far he's brought me. <laughs> he brought me a long way. You praise through the stomachache. You praise it. You praise it. Just keep worshiping. Close your eyes. It'll lift. It'll lift. Trust me. I've been doing this a long time. See the devil? He's trying to mess with it because I, but you keep worshiping. It'll lift. It has to lift. It. Two things can't stand in the presence of the Lord. Sin can and sickness can. By his stripes you are healed. So if you worship through it, it'll break. Just open your mouth and say, Lord, I bless your name. Lord, I worship you. Worship will break the stomachache. You're going to find it getting lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. Close your eye, close your eye. Lighter and lighter. It's lifted, it's lifted, it's lifted until it's not even there. The worship will take your mind off of it. Has God brought anybody besides me a long way? If it's you, take a step forward. If you know what it is not to have pillow to post and have the sleep on the floor. Not to have cover the cover up and have to take your clothes and go in your clothes for warmth. In the Osula by we could do it. Somebody say the name of Jesus. 
while every hand raised, every eye closed. It's lifting, I know. Father, every heart in this room, prepare them. Somebody say, devil, you can't have it. Everyone open your mouth in this room. Say, devil, you can't have it. What, what he can't have? Well, I say, devil, you can't have it. What can he not have? Say, devil, you can't have it. What he can't have? Your testimony. Hallelujah, Monica. As every eyes close and hand raised. So Lord, we got to tell you that you're wonderful just for a minute. We have to tell you you're amazing just for a minute. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. Come on, keep your hand raised. Keep your hand raised. Yeah, just for a minute. It's okay, baby. We've been there. Some of us just, we can't cry now. We ain't want no one to see. Somebody say, I win. I win. Write that down tonight. Say, I win. I win. Put that on your envelopes tonight. You may be seated. Get ready. Say, I win. I win. 